Hey everyone, I'm Acid. This is part 2 of 3 on how to draw furries. Today we're going to learn about line art, coloring, and shading. First we're going to be learning how to prepare a canvas for line art. Then we're going to learn about same size line art, dynamic line art, with a mouse and with a pen. No line art, which is like a painting or lineless style. How to color with a fill or lasso tool. How to color with a paintbrush and how to color your line art. And shading a 3D space and using a light source, multiplier layers, and colors that you will use to shade with. Okay, so before you go straight into doing your line art, there's three things that I want you to do with your canvas. The first thing I want you to do is to create a new layer and name it line art. The next thing I want you to do is go to your sketch layer and lower the opacity down from about 50 to 10. I'm going to go with around 20 for this video so that everyone can see, but usually I actually go lower to like 14 or 15. The next thing you want to do is lock your sketch and your background layer so you don't accidentally put your line art on those layers. It can be really annoying if you put them on the wrong layer because it means you have to do all your line art over again. So the first style of line art that we're going to learn is flat line art or line art that does not vary in size throughout the drawing. So right off the bat I see people without a drawing tablet go to a very large pen size and just start doing their lines and you can lose a lot of detail with this so you're actually going to want to use a very small pen size and it can be kind of scary to use a small pen size because that means you have to pay way more attention to where your lines are going and how they're being drawn so we're going to start over here with this tuft of fur so using the smaller pen size we're going to put it at like 10 you can just follow along your sketch and do exactly what your sketch looks like. And you can just do that for the entire piece using this smaller brush. And you can use your eraser tool and you can just like make these edges. You can make them curved and make them match up. And you can go to the inside edges and there's a few things you can do. You can keep them curved, you can make them flat if you want, you can you can sharpen them, and all of these um, changes are stylistic. So it honestly doesn't matter what you do. I honestly really like making them flat. I think that just looks really good in the end. And it's very stylistic. And you can just do that for all the inside edges and for the outside edges edges just make sure that they are smooth and circular. So for the lines that are too hard to follow with your mouse because they might be too long or too curvy, you can use the curve tool and just follow along. And now most programs have this, like even Microsoft Paint has this tool. I know a lot of artists start out on Microsoft Paint, I did and just follow along these curves, that would be too hard to do otherwise. Another thing you can do is try and turn the sensitivity of your mouse down, and I did that because I have a mouse that just has a button for different DPIs, and this will make it so that you have more control over where your lines are. You can also turn the stabilization up on your program, a lot of programs have this. And that'll make it like way easier to actually follow along. Just like that. So that's that honestly for the style of flatline art. Now real quick I'm gonna show you how to use this flatline art with different brush sizes. So you can turn up your size to like 20 for example and you would use this larger brush for like things that are protruding or very important lines. For example, ears are coming out of the head. So you would use this larger brush size. Maybe like this chin underneath or like the muzzle or something like hair. And this is really uh, rough, by the way. You would take more time on your artwork and make sure it's perfect. And then you would use a smaller brush size 
for maybe things like these um, muzzle spots or like the nose or the eyes maybe you'll use something you'll use something larger for the eyes to indicate that, like there, that there's eyelashes and we would use a very small brush for things like maybe these glasses because these are just something that is on the character you don't want them to be too pronounced so this is <laughs> incredibly rough but it's kinda just showing you that you can use these different um, size lines and you can use the same stylistic things that I told you like making these corners square or sharp or whatever you want so I'm going to finish this li this um this line art in this style and I'm going to show you what it looks like at the end so you can decide if you want to do this kind okay so the next type of line art that I'm going to teach you how to do is what I call dynamic line art and this is when your pen kind of fades in and out throughout your um, your line and gives you different thicknesses so if you don't have a drawing tablet and you're using a mouse you need this like pen that makes it so that whatever line you draw will end up having these thinner and thicker lines in the center and at the ends if you don't have that you can like technically go with your pen and draw each line and then go with your eraser and erase it to make it sharp like a very gradual sharpness and this might give you a little bit more oh, this might give you a little bit more control but this is not going to be as consistent and i suggest if you don't want to use fire Opeka or you have a program that doesn't have this i just suggest you go with the more flat liner until you have a tablet that has pressure sensitivity so this um, fade in and out tool is really useful but it does have some drawbacks um, what the first one is if you're just drawing and you're following along with your lines in your sketch you're gonna notice that like you get these really thin um, tips at the end of your lines and it's a little bit more work to get rid of these but it's pretty easy just follow along and continue your line like outwards far past where the uh, line would end normally and you want to do this for every line that you do and this will just make it so you'll have to go back and you'll have to erase all of these like little boys that go out see and get rid of them all and once you get rid of them just like this you will have this sharp, like stylized, very nice line art that is very dynamic and just looks good to the eye. Now, this is very stylistic, but if you want, you can add like extra little lines that show like, oh, there's uh, extra like clumps of fur here. You don't have to do that. That's just something I really like doing. So. The next drawback with this type of liner is when you're doing a, a large line, like for example the ears, you'll notice like the ends are gonna get thin and you're that's just not gonna look good. Now you can do the same thing where you extend outwards very far and then you like erase where it would be. But something um, simpler is to just use the pen tool to draw these these parts just like you know just like this and they're not gonna have different thicknesses for these parts which doesn't really matter because they're kind of um, they're kind of very already you wouldn't use that different thickness for especially parts like here you know you're just you're not using those different thicknesses because these are very like flat surfaces but you can also use your curve tool and, 
and uh, oh no, I'm sorry about that. You can use your curve tool and you can just follow along just like this and you know extend outwards just a little bit because I'm going to show you. So draw your original line and then you can draw up like this and now you can erase. And that's just super simple way to get this nice like uh oh, I'm sorry. Get this nice line that has like a tiny bit of variance in its thickness. Like over here it's a bit thinner and over here and it just makes it look a little tiny bit more dynamic if you just use that. It also gives you a more precise line since you're using your mouse. So I'm going to finish this um, liner so that you can see what it looks like when it's done. But that's honestly pretty much it. Okay, so now that you're finished with your line art, make sure your line art layer is locked and create a layer underneath your line art and name it base. So we're going to learn how to isolate our character from the background. You can do this using the magic wand tool, which basically just selects an area based on um, where the lines are. We're going to make sure we use expand, and we're going to expand by 3 pixels just because. And you're selecting outside of the character, you're going to be selecting the background. This is because we're just going to inverse the selection, and this makes sure this makes sure basically that all of these like little um, corners or um, small parts are selected. You can inverse with Control shift i on most programs, or you can just go up to select and press inverse. So, we're going to pick a solid color, 100% opacity with a large brush, and just fill in... Sorry. And we're just going to fill in this base, this base layer. So now we have something to work off of. I'm going to lock this layer and create another one, and name it color. And this this um, layer is going to be clipped onto the base layer, which means you can draw whatever you want, and it's only going to be on the parts you already drew on on the layer below. This is really useful. You're not going to accidentally go into your background at all and have little uh, little mistakes that'll show up when you do your background. So you can deselect. And now that you have your color layer, you can start putting down some of the colors on your, of your character. Now this is super simple. If you have a space that's already like closed off, you can just use your fill tool with the expand pixel up. And you can do this for a lot of your character if your character has parts that are solid colors. Um, you can even fill in areas like this. Let me show you. So, I just filled this area in with a dark gray. And now I'm going to do the marking that is on this area on another... Um, okay, so now that I filled this in, I'm sorry. I'm going to do the marking just like this. Just make your marking. And what you're basically doing is using this color and isolating the areas where your marking is going to be. And you can use fill tool for this. If you don't want to use fill tool when you're doing this, you also have the option of just, you know, coloring, coloring it in. But fill tool is extremely convenient, and if you use it correctly and make sure you fill in anything it may have missed, there is honestly like no reason why you shouldn't use fill tool. People really like to hate on fill tool, but fill tool is like like probably one of the most useful things that I know of in art. So you're just going to color in your entire character like this, and just a tip is to be very, very mindful of where you put your lines. Like, for example, up here, the character has a, 
they have white tips on their ears. So I want to make sure when I'm doing the gray and isolating it off, I think about the way, the shape of the ear. So instead of doing this, and being like, okay, now I, now I color this part in gray. I want to think, well, the ear is curving like this, and then it's flattening out a little bit. And then this part is just completely, almost, almost flat, but oh, like coming in just a little bit. And this is going to show you, like, you can zoom out and be like, oh, wow, that actually has, like, shape to it. So you just want to be careful with your markings. You're not changing your markings at all. You're just making sure that they go onto the 3D space of your character. So, last thing, just make sure you're not you're not filling something like this. If you fill something on the same layer to something else that is a different color. You're gonna get these, um, th this is called anti-aliasing. It's supposed to make your, uh, drawing, like, less sharp, but you, like, you want a sharp image, basically. And this will just soften it out, and it'll, since you have expand on your fill tool, it'll actually move the border outwards. So make sure, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna fill this in, make sure you create another layer to do it on. That's basically it for how to color your character. I'm going to finish this so you can see what it looks like at the end. Okay, now that your entire drawing is colored, I'm going to teach you really quickly how to color your line art if you want to do that. This is like completely an option. Um, you don't have to do this. So create a layer above your line art layer and clip it to your line art. And this layer you're just going to take the colors of um, these shapes in your drawing and you're going to get a color that's just darker and color in the lines. Um, like, like I said, this is purely a style choice and you don't have to do this. I just wanted to teach you how to do it because if you do choose to do this, you can get some nice looking art. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to go over is shading, and honestly, shading is something I still have difficulty with because it's really, like, you have to learn on your own. Nobody really can tell you exactly how you're supposed to shade. I can kind of just give you some tips and some techniques to use. So, first thing, I've said it a million times, just make sure you're thinking of things as a 3D space when you're shading. And the next thing is to always keep in mind where your light source is going to be. So, for example, if my light source was over here, um, things that would be illuminated would be like the top of my hair, like this. And, um,. You know, part of the ears, maybe part of the nose. And then you have to keep in mind all the parts that would not be illuminated. Like, even the bottom of the hair. And you're thinking of it, it's a 3D space rather than just, like, um, small lines. This would not be illuminated, I'm sorry. So, um, a way I see people do their shading is they just go onto their, their hair and they say, okay shade you shade 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 i mean this is a good start you understand that like you're shading um you know where the light isn't but understand that like this is these hairs or these tufts of fur are they're these 3d shapes i'll draw i'll draw some circles so you understand what i mean so you're thinking, oh, okay, so more like all of this would be shaded. And you can add some little, like, tufts to show that, like, um, it's also fur, or like a, a hair-like texture. 
So that's one way to shade. And you're doing that on a layer um, that's clipped to your color layer, by the way. With highlights, it's kind of the same thing. If your light is more like behind your character, you can do these um, this like rim or edge lighting, where it's very light, like here. And it kind of just shows the light sources like behind the character. Um, I don't really do this too much, but if you use a multiply layer on top of your color layer and then you shade. You can use like warm and cool colors to get like completely different shading effects. Now I don't really do this too much, but I'm using this like blue purplish color and it's on a multiply layer. And if if I if I draw it like on my um character, you're gonna notice like I've got these shadows that are like a uh, kind of moody, you know, they have like a, a feel to them. They're like a very, um, they're like a cool shadow or like a warm shadow if you went with like more of like a, a red color. So just make sure you're keeping in mind 3D spaces. I'm gonna show you like a few tips for shading that aren't really um, aren't really anything substantial, but just some things to keep in mind. So, if you want your character's eyes to look like they have like a good amount of depth to them, or like their their brow, more like, take a very slightly darker color. That's way darker. And you want like this kind of like above the eye area to be filled in. And um, you want to make sure you're doing it in like a good space. I'm just trying to demonstrate so it doesn't look too good. But have this all filled in and it'll kind of show that your character has like this, um, their brow is not just a flat surface like their uh, eyebrow is coming out a bit and their eye is in a little bit with that's just how um animals and people look now eyes are another thing when you're shading and coloring the eyes there's really it's one of the things where there's just like no right way to do it you can um you can use like something that I like to do, which is super simple, is take a very dark color. Like I'm taking like a, a dark, uh, I'm gonna take a dark orangish color. Cause I think that would be better. And I shade from the top and I make it dark and then I slowly change the color and the, um, like how light the value. And I'm going back up and I'm using like a yellowish green. I'm going up and it's even more green, it's even more light. And this is really exaggerated, like I would do this in a smaller uh, span of colors, but if you do that you can get like a kind of like a weird eye effect, if you know what I'm talking about. So that's kind of honestly it for shading. If you color your line art though, um, you probably don't even have to shade. I would say if you're just beginning, you don't have to practice shading too much. Um, if you think a piece looks good without it, you don't have to add it if you don't want to because sometimes it can just make a piece look a little bit weird if that's not what you're going for. I suggest making sure you know the basics like the shapes and um, how to do good line art and how to color and have continuity with your lines before you start seriously trying to shade. So just doing some light shading, not too dramatic, making sure you're following the 3D shapes, um, that can really help you out. Another like a stylistic thing is if you take like a nice light color, you can just do like these little uh, these nice little circles 
if you don't want to do other types of shading. And this is just incredibly good to give your character a super simple like you can do you can do them darker too actually. And this kind of like just hints at there being shading. It's very good if you're just beginning and you're not comfortable with shading. Remember to take your time and um, just try it. Even if you're not going to put the shading in the piece, just try and do it and if you don't like it, you can get rid of it. But just make sure you're always practicing even if you don't put it in the final product. I'm going to completely shade this and so you'll be able to see it. And that's pretty much it for shading and line arting your uh, characters. Before I end this video, I want to let you guys know that this art and the techniques that I use are very simplified and as you get better at drawing or as you get a drawing tablet, things will become easier and things will begin to look a little bit better. So thank you guys so much for watching and consider subscribing. Have a great day.